Hi, and welcome back to the CG Bros. Today I'm going to briefly explain how to add a texture map that contains an alpha channel to any object in Motion Builder so it shows up in your viewport. For those of you who don't know what an alpha map is or does, it's just simply a technique in 3D computer graphics where an image is texture mapped onto a 3D object which allows you to make certain areas of that object transparent or translucent. One of the major reasons it is used in 3D is because it's simply another way to eliminate the need to model extra geometry and instead relies on the image for the geometry detail. Alpha channels can also be used to composite one image seamlessly over another which is very commonly used in Photoshop as well as After Effects and other compositing packages. We're not going to go over those today. Here are some quick examples using alpha maps. So if you look here, we have got two characters from Uncharted 2, we've got Chloe and Drake. And you can look at their hair right away and you can see how low poly uh, the hair is. Um, you don't have to model every strand and you can see that by using alpha maps you can actually get every strand of hair that makes it look like it's more detailed than it really is. Same with Chloe, so if we uh, zoom in here you can actually see it a little bit easier here. You can see the edges and then um, you can also compare those to the uh, polygon sides here. So let's take a look at another. Uh, you can see this trees, leaves are very, very low poly here, and you can see the actual detail of the texture map with, uh, that shows a lot of leaves here. Also, if you look here at the base of the tree, you'll see some ivy. Let me get to another image where it's a little bit closer. And you can see those leaves actually casting shadows as well. So it's kind of nice to be able to use those, uh, those alpha maps to uh, make more detail than there really is. So let's get started in Motion Builder. I can show you how to do that. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you want to go to your Asset Browser. If you don't see the layout exactly the way I have it here, just go to your window and then go to Asset Browser right there. Go ahead and go down to Primitives. And we're going to go ahead and select the plane. Let's left click, drag that into your viewport. And then make sure that Rotate is turned on. And we're going to go ahead and type in here 90 degrees. I'm just going to zoom around here and kind of frame my view. Next thing we want to do is we want to add a shader to that. So let's go ahead and go to Shading Elements in the same asset browser. Go ahead and left click and drag that onto the plane and attach to the diffuse. The next thing we want to do is we want to go down to Shaders and we want to grab the flat shader. And we'll drag that on there, left click, replace all. And the next thing for organization's sake, I'm just going to rename this plane Palm. And then all I did is just right click on here and you can go ahead and rename there. Next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and double click on my material, go to the texture, and I want to pick my media. So I want to pick a palm tree that I've already gotten. It's a 32-bit uh, PNG file. And they're, they're very uh, easy to find on the internet. If you find uh, you look for alpha map trees, you can probably find a bunch of free ones like I did. Let's go ahead and select that. New media. We're going to go ahead and grab that palm. It's PNG, like I said. Here we go. And as you notice, you still see the white around here, and it's not cut out, so you're not seeing any transparency here. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to go over to the shader, the flat shader here underneath the uh, scene, in the navigator, and double click on flat, and that'll open up the, uh, the uh, shader settings. We want to make sure that transparency, it by default says no transparency, we want to make sure that that is matte. As soon as you do that, you can see it go to transparent mode there, so all the white area is now gone. So let's go ahead and just move that down to the, uh, the uh, grid plane here. I'm just going to move it down right about there. Okay. So that's pretty simple how you do that, but what I'd like to do is also just show you how I have this also cast a shadow. So let's do another plane. So go to primitives, grab a plane, left click, drag it in there. Let's go ahead and move it down in the translate mode here. Um, let's type in 0, 0, 0. Okay. Make sure it's picked. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and just go to the scale uniform, and I'm going to go ahead and scale from the center, drag that out with the left mouse button, and that's about, that's good enough. And what I want to do also is I want to add another shader. 
And I believe I have another tutorial where I show you how to do a live shadow. So I'm just going to do it again here. Just drag a live shadow onto that. Replace all. And it does it still there? It kind of goes away. So now we need to, to add a light. So let's go to elements. Let me add a light into the scene. Drag that in. And we're going to go ahead and make that a spotlight. So underneath the uh, the light, basically the attributor, like it would be in Maya, but the light here, just make sure it's selected in the navigator. And we're going to go ahead and, and select a spotlight. And also by default, uh, draws the uh, the volumetric part of that too. You can turn that on or off. It depends on what you want to do. So let's just move it around here. So it's behind plant. I'm just going to go ahead and turn that off down here. You can see it in the light settings here. Go ahead and just turn that off. And also the uh, ground projection. Let's turn that off as well. Okay. So now under the shader itself, what we want to do for that plane is see live shadow. We want to make sure that the planar shadow is now set to projective shadow. So there you go. It's very simple. And you can rotate this around, mess around with it, and get it the way you want it. Gonna zoom it up. Move it out. And there you go.